Recent heavy rains in Japan are creating more problems for workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Rainwater has accumulated in containment areas around tanks storing radioactive water, and it spilled outside those areas. Some of the spilled water contained unsafe levels of a radioactive substance. NHK World's Masaki Otake reports. Workers at Fukushima Daiichi have been struggling for months with leaks of contaminated water. Now they're dealing with another problem, rain. They saw a heavy downpour last week during a typhoon. And on Sunday, another storm brought more than 100 millimeters of rain. All that water built up inside barriers surrounding tanks that store contaminated water. Workers discovered it had flowed over the barriers at 11 spots. In six areas, they detected levels of radioactive strontium above the government safety limit. The highest reading was more than 70 times the standard. Now the workers are trying to find out whether some of the water flowed through ditches and into the Pacific Ocean. The barriers are designed to contain any tainted water that leaks from the tanks. The walls are fitted with drainage pipes. Initially, whenever it rained, workers opened the pipes to discharge rainwater. But in August, they found that 300 tons of highly radioactive water had leaked from one of the tanks. It traveled through a pipe to the area beyond the barrier. Workers decided to shut off all the pipes and pump out any water that collected inside the containment area. They now check the pumped out water for radioactivity to ensure it meets government standards. Heavy rains are making that job a lot harder. Managers plan to install more pumps around the tanks to make sure they can deal with any amount of water. They say they don't want to get caught out the next time a storm hits. Masaki Otake, NHK World. The International Atomic Energy Agency has presented the result of its week-long study in Fukushima to Japan's government. The UN nuclear watchdog said the government's one millisievert decontamination goal cannot be achieved soon and advised the government to communicate more with the public to get a more realistic view of radiation and related risks. NHK World's Noriko Okada reports. The disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in March 2011 spread radioactive substances over eastern Japan. The government ordered more than 80,000 residents in Fukushima prefecture to evacuate as they were living in areas where radiation levels exceeded 20 millisieverts per year. The government is conducting decontamination work to lower the levels. The IAEA did the research in Fukushima this month at the request of Japan's government. Inspectors checked the progress of the decontamination and made a preliminary report. The agency said the work was progressing well, but the one millisievert goal cannot be achieved soon through decontamination alone. It stressed that the government should try to explain to the public that an individual radiation dose from 1 to 20 millisieverts per year is in line with the international standards. It suggested that we are allocating resources to the recovery of essential infrastructure would benefit the public and that more effort is needed to monitor individual dose to decide on decontamination. You have to select the appropriate value of protection, level of protection, in the range from 1 to 20 millisievert for these specific uh, existing exposure situations. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll take a picture. Japan's government did not specify how it would reflect the advice in its policies. The government will continue working on the decontamination process along with reconstruction efforts. We also want to deepen our relationship with the international community, including the IAEA, by releasing relevant information.
Many residents have been asking the government to achieve the one millisievert level as soon as possible. The IAEA says the balance between benefits and burdens should be considered. Noriko Okada, NHK World, Tokyo. Welcome back to Early Start. It has been nearly three years since an earthquake and tsunami led to a catastrophic meltdown at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. And the work to contain that meltdown continues to this day. Now, amid a series of accidents that have plagued the facility, some of the people tasked with keeping toxic material in check are speaking out. Here's Paula Hancox. They are the workers trying to contain the world's worst nuclear disaster in a quarter of a century. A vital and dangerous job. But this worker at the Fukushima nuclear power plant tells CNN he is not treated well. He believes that if he complains, he will be fired. Hiding his identity, as workers are forbidden to talk to the media, he tells me he works 300 meters from the tank where a toxic water leak was discovered in August. We only know the facts when we get home, he claims, watching TV news and reading the newspapers the next day. There's no explanation about what is happening and how dangerous it might be. TEPCO says this leak was not dangerous to workers as they were wearing protective gear, telling CNN they have a system in place to ensure that workers know the general radiation levels in their areas, but they don't pass on all details of incidents to avoid confusion. This is a very complicated issue, says TEPCO's spokesman. Once this kind of trouble occurs, we assess what emergency measures are necessary, and if the accident does not affect workers directly, we don't explain the issue. As a subcontractor and not a direct TEPCO employee, this man is paid $110 a day, $50 lower than an online advert we saw for a similar job with another subcontractor at the same plant. Paid by his company and not directly by TEPCO, he worries the danger money workers are promised for possible radiation exposure is being skimmed off by some companies. Reports of middlemen getting rich from this disaster prompted TEPCO to issue questionnaires to subcontractors and their workers last year. TEPCO says 30% of those who responded said they received no danger pay for working at the plant. Of a dozen companies contacted by CNN, two dismissed the claims. Only one said it was aware of the issue and was working to ensure fair payment. TEPCO says it's doing the same. This man worked as a subcontractor at the plant immediately after the 2011 disaster. He says he doesn't believe TEPCO and its contractors are interested in fairness for workers. In order to cut costs, he says, TEPCO brought in a bidding system. To win the project, contractors are bidding so low. It's simple, he tells me. Excessive cost cutting is making workers suffer in terms of payment and health. TEPCO maintains the bidding system is necessary and is making sure bids are adequate without excessive cost cutting. Hailed as heroes following the nuclear meltdown, these two workers say there is now a feeling amongst some of being underappreciated and underpaid. Paula Hancock's CNN, Fukushima, Japan. Workers monitoring the spread of toxic water around Fukushima are going to ramp up efforts. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say they'll check offshore radiation levels around the clock. TEPCO officials on Monday had a panel meeting with Nuclear Regulation Authority personnel. They're studying the impact of radioactive water leaks. Plant workers currently check coastal waters once a day. But experts have called for 24-hour monitoring to allow for better information and faster responses. TEPCO officials said they'll give more details at a meeting next month. And nuclear regulators propose increasing the distance they're monitoring from 300 kilometers to up to 3,000 kilometers. One panel member said the agency will ask ships to collect data to share with Pacific Rim countries. Rescue workers have resumed their search for missing people on the island of Izuoshima, south of Tokyo. 28 people were killed and 18 went missing last week after torrential rains from Typhoon Weepa triggered floods and a major landslide. Now the islanders are preparing for the arrival of not one but two additional storms. NHK World's Mikiko Suzuki reports. 
Authorities on Izu Oshima have lifted evacuation advisories that were in effect since Saturday due to heavy rain. We haven't bathed in two days. We want to change our clothes. About 1,200 rescuers have resumed their search for the missing from last week's landslide. They include police officers, firefighters, and self-defense force units. The islanders have no time to relax. A typhoon and a severe tropical storm are approaching Japan, meaning they have to prepare for another evacuation. Some are busy piling up sandbags to protect their houses and shops from flooding. Workers at this inn are boarding up windows and doors. They're anticipating strong winds and heavy rain. We heard two more tropical storms are heading our way. We are preparing as best we can before another evacuation. Residents are concerned. 75-year-old Yasukumi Yoshimi lives alone in the district hit hardest by last week's landslide. He's worried the mountain behind his home could collapse again. I'm worried and I feel unsafe. Yoshimi says elderly residents must be given enough time to evacuate. One of the storms threatening the island is Typhoon Francisco. It's expected to approach Japan later this week. Authorities on Izu Oshima are especially concerned about keeping the residents informed in a timely manner to prevent a recurrence of last week's tragedy. Many people have turned away from nuclear power since Japan's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. But British leaders are heading in the other direction. They're planning to build a nuclear plant in southwest England. Government officials announced a deal with French firm EDF. They're joining up in Somerset to construct the Hinkley Point C power station. We're making the market more competitive, we're getting people put onto the lowest tariff, and those are the steps that I think will make a real difference. But no mistake about it, this is a very big day for our country. The first time we've built another nuclear power, a new nuclear power station uh, for a very long time in our country. Executives at French nuclear firm Areva and two Chinese nuclear companies have signed on to the plan worth 16 billion pounds, or about 26 billion dollars. British leaders say the project will create 25,000 jobs. They also hope to provide long-term and safe supplies of electricity. Plant operators will start pumping out power to 6 million households in 2023. Throughout Japan, depopulation is speeding up. 80% of the prefectures are losing residents, and experts predict that by 2025, even major cities will be affected. Residents of one community are getting creative in their attempts to attract young people. NHK World's Keiko Aso has more. In the town of Chizu, devils are on the roof, chasing after 60 single. It's a new style of dating game organized by the local community. They are hoping love will bloom and the couples will stay in the town. The participants get instructions by text on their mobile phones. One message says the girls have to link arms with a man so they won't be caught by a devil. It's a great icebreaker. After the game is over, everyone reveals who they'd like as their partner. It's lots of fun but also a serious growth strategy for town officials and residents. <laughs> the event produced 14 couples. Yay. Wow, that was fun. Say something. <laughs> 
いい経験。It was a good experience. Thank you. It's just great. Fourteen couples from here. Chizu's population now stands at about 7,800. That's a drop of around 15% over the past 10 years. Forestry used to be the town's economic mainstay, but the industry has dwindled because of increasing imports. The town has also launched a new homestay program with local families. Visitors are also guaranteed a place to stay in the event of a natural disaster. This is another way to attract potential residents. Having a place like this where we can escape to makes us feel more secure. Chizu is also offering a deal that encourages newcomers to settle there. The Hase family was eager to live in an old traditional house. This one cost about twenty thousand dollars. The local government paid half. On condition, they would live in the town for five years. This makes so much more sense than spending hundreds of thousands on a new house. Officials estimate there are at least 200 houses still standing empty in the town. Newcomers are picky, and most homeowners are reluctant to rent to people they don't know. Officials visit owners and explain they can find good renters. The town also offers financial support. Owners are given two thousand dollars to clean up their houses. If the town is involved, we don't mind renting a house. We are happy to help increase the town's population. Young people move away to improve their lives. It's not right to stop them. So we're offering different kinds of services to bring others in. Japan is struggling to find ways to stop depopulation. Chizu is a small town deep in the countryside, but its efforts could inspire creative solutions throughout the country. Keiko Aso, NHK World, Totori.
Yeah.